boys and girls welcome to my a hundredth video and i am your host Ms. Zell. on today's video we will talk about a case we will talk about a stolen lives case and today we are going to remember mary jane barker and i will give you the time time so if you don't want to listen to what i'm gonna say you can just uh skip to the case part but if you want to listen to me hi welcome welcome to miss those shit for i don't know like five minutes maybe more maybe less but probably more okay so um I just told you that this is my 100th video on this channel and I'm really really happy about that like I made it out alive and I am still doing this job so yeah it's a milestone for me when I first started this channel in 2020 I was like, um, probably I'm gonna delete this channel after a few videos because no one is gonna watch and I will just lose my motivation and people will make fun of me and I will not have the passion for it anymore. But here we are shooting our 100th video and I, I'm really, really happy and I want to thank me for believing in me and not giving up after a few videos yes i don't have like many subscribers i only have 237 at the moment and i keep losing subscribers but is it gonna stop me no i am still here and i appreciate every single one of you and actually i had different things in my mind for my 100th video but um, I'm a mess and I don't, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I just didn't feel like doing any of them at the moment. So I just wanted to like talk for a few minutes at the beginning of my next case. Well, First of all, I am really, really sorry about my hair. Actually, I'm not sorry about that. I, I decided to go with it. Like, so why would I be sorry? I'm not sorry. I'm a messy lady and I am like this all the time. Today is Sunday and my friend braided my hair on Friday and I've been sleeping with this hair for like, I don't know, two nights. And... I don't know. I just didn't feel like fixing it because this weekend I was at home studying all the time. Studying, I don't know, four to five hours a day. And I didn't go out, so I didn't feel like fixing my hair. And <laughs> I know, I, I know that's not the case, but this is giving me Wednesday Adam swipes, like... I know her hair is fixed and braided, fully braided, but still this hair gives me Wednesday Adam's wipes. And I, I don't know why I told you about this, like, it's, it's weird. Okay, so for a hundredth video, if you're still listening to my shit, I want to... I want you to be special because you're special so I will let you use my name I won't be a Jane Doe for you anymore you will be able to use my name while commencing or watching and stuff so I know it's not a big deal but still I want to tell you my name so I am coming from a mixed family like um Everyone around me speaks with a different accent and like my grandparents or my parents speak like my parents do not really speak 
different languages, but my grandparents and my relatives speak with different languages. So growing up, I always had that thing, like people calling me by different names because I have a very, very long name. Like my full name is very long and it's very hard and no one uses my original name. So I, I don't really like using it either. Like only, I don't know, like they use those, that name at school, at hospital and stuff. Like people around me don't use my full name or my ID name. So, hi, <laughs> my name is Blue. Like really the blue, the, the color one. Like my friends and sometimes my family calls me Blue. And hi, nice to meet you. I'm Blue. But if you don't like this name, like I have a few more so you can choose. Like I don't know what to say. Like some people call me B because like that's short for blue. But not many people use that nickname. But if you want to you can use it because it is also a nickname for my other name which is phoebe you know b b b you get it my, my cousin uses that name my cousin loves calling me phoebe or sometimes b and the nickname was found founded by her so she uses b or phoebe and you are allowed to say whatever you want. And my other name is used by my grandparents, mostly by my grandma. It is Dina. Dina. D-I-N-A without H. It is Dina. And it is a mixture of my like full name, like D N. Nah. So yeah, she loves calling me Dina. And my other name, which is used, like which, I don't know how to say, but like some people cannot pronounce Phoebe or Blue or B or Dina, or they don't want to use that those names. So they call me Naz. Naz is my name and you can also use it but not many people like i don't know want to use that name because they find it hard it really does not matter and i have a few more but i don't like them so i gave you a whole bunch of names so you can choose one of them and you can use that name and no one is gonna know about this if they don't watch that part of the video <laughs> i was thinking about doing this when walk county jane doe i mean sherry jarvis was identified because when i first created this channel i had a thing in my mind say it was like uh if walk county jane doe becomes identified then i will just go and shoot a video about my identity and i won't be a jane doe anymore but fortunately Sherry was identified after a few after I shared a few videos and it was not really the time for me coming out and yeah yeah the, the, the. one last thing before we start today's case I just decided to create another channel because like if something happens to this channel I want to have a backup one and its name is Phoebe Blue Gray. Gray is my surname, maybe? It might be a surname. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it does. Maybe it does not. Who knows? But it is Phoebe Blue Gray, and I'll, I don't know, add an overlay of the channel. Like, no one is subscribed to that channel yet. But if you want to, you can subscribe to my channel and maybe I will share vlogs or like do weird stuff there. I don't know. I don't know. We will we will see. Like I want this channel to be 
a remembering channel only a remembering channel like i don't want to share out of concept stuff like i shared myself reading episode reading a crime story on episode which didn't really belong to this channel or i shared a huda beauty lipstick set review which did not belong to this channel either and because of that i don't want to mess this channel up so i created a new channel and you can subscribe to my channel if you want to and now thank you for listening to my shit for around like i don't know 10 minutes maybe and i'm it is so nice to meet you and i'm really glad to be here and now we can start our case well hi welcome if you haven't watched the per first part of this video welcome to my channel it is Ms. Do, and today we are here to remember mary jane barker and this case is actually a little bit like sad sadder than our other cases because mary jane barker was a sweet little baby so yeah it, it's it's too bad on february the 25th 1957 mary jane barker an american four-year-old girl from belmer new jersey went missing along with her playmate's dog after an extensive search throughout the city, dubbed by the press as the largest search in South Jersey, her dead body was discovered by her playmates in the closet of a vacant house near her home on March the 3rd. The dog bounded out of the closet, seemingly unharmed despite the initial suspicion of foul play the death was ruled an accident a case of starvation and exposure as barker was unable to escape the closet investigators concluded that barker died on february the 28th three days after her disappearance as a result, the mayor ordered closed doors to open more easily. The press surrounding the Barker case also led to the first calls about the boy in the box. I haven't covered the case of the boy in the box yet, but it is like, <sighs> he is on my list and I will shoot a video to remember him and and we will cover his case also in the future i don't know when like not not soon because like i have a list and there are people before him so but we will definitely cover his case so don't worry who was mary jane barker how did she disappear Mary Jane Barker was born in Belmar, New Jersey, U.S. on February the 28th, 1953 to Mr. and Mrs. Frank Barker. So if you haven't realized, uh, if you haven't found Easter egg yet, unfortunately she died on her birthday. She had two older siblings, Carol Ann, eight years older and frank jr six years older barker disappeared along with a four-month-old black spaniel puppy at 10 30 a.m on monday february the 25th 1957 in Belmar. she was last seen playing in a nearby yard going to meet with her friend and neighbor six-year-old maria freita the owner of the dog Police were notified by 1.30 p.m. She was presumed kidnapped and the next day footprints were found along a nearby stream bank which seemed those of a man, child and a dog. The police stated that the small footprints on the mud matched the size of Barker's shoes. 
Her disappearance touched off an intensive search for a kidnapper or murderer, according to the Philadelphia Inquirer. It was called the largest search in South Jersey. Hundreds of volunteers and police searched the city. On the first night, more than 200 civilians did a food-by-food food search. Eventually, well over a thousand people were involved. Her fourth birthday came and went with no sign of her. On Wednesday, February the 27th, the parents made an appeal on television to anyone who may have kidnapped Barker, asking them to leave the child in the nearest church. Vern Lovering, a 43-year-old floor sander and convicted child molester, had been questioned and said he was near the Barker home. On Thursday, February the 28th, the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI as we know, conducted its own search and the next day again questioned Lovering after police received a phone call demanding $500 ransom. Police made an appeal to the kidnapper not to act in haste or do harm to the child. The grief of the Barker family was especially acute on February the 28th and March the 1st since those were the birthdays of Barker and her father and they were planning to have a joint celebration that week. The police stated that they were working on several leads but had no oops, sorry, but had no developments. On Saturday, March the second, the FBI was officially called in following the pro pro provisions of the Federal Kidnapping Act. Several nearby dams were searched to no avail. On Sunday, March the 3rd, Maria Frita, the owner of the dog and the playmate of Barker, went with her mother to a vacant, newly built ranch house next door to her home. It was on 433 2nd Ave, owned by her aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Pat Wekia. Maria managed to open a three-foot Cross five feet bedroom closet store and her missing dog bounded out of the closet and leaped happily at her. Also in the closet was Barker, that in a seated position, the hood of her blue coat partially covering her blonde hair. She was found in the same clothes she had on when she disappeared. Bits of fur from her hat were rubbed off. Police Chief Edward Garitti stated he believed that Barker had recently been placed in the closet as the puppy had been fed recently and there was no animal waste in the closet despite the dog not being housebroken. During previous searches, including a visit by a repairman, no dog, dog was hurt. The house had been searched three times before but the bedroom closet where her body was found was not searched. Rev, Rev, I, I don't I don't know what that means. Harry McIntyre, wait, Harry McIntyre looked in bedroom closets on February the twenty sixth, but it never occurred to him to search the front bedroom closet. I concentrated on the basement, believing the girl might have fallen down the stairs, he said. A volunteer fireman, John Reeves, also searched the first floor bedroom, but not the closet. Barker may have been too frightened, frightened to cry out. Although the door was unlocked, a thumb screw inside apparently made it difficult for a child to open. The door had a knob on the outside, but only a small turn latch on the inside. On March the 4th, the autopsy indicated Barker had nothing in her system since some chocolate milk the morning of her disappearance and had not eaten since she vanished. There was no indication of foul play, no signs of violence or sexual molestation. It was found she must have lived in the closet for three days without food or drink. An inspection of the closet showed marks from her attempt to escape.
It was found the dog was with her the whole time. The dog was alive and frisky, which initially led investigators to believe she had been in the closet only a short time. The dog was first taken to a local veterinarian for a study, but he concluded that it was possible that the dog had to be put down to examine its stomach contents. Dr. Robert Sower, the veterinarian, stated that the survival of the dog for several days was consistent with the stamina of such an animal. On March the 4th, the dog was if if wait euthanized 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 to allow veterinarians from the University of Pennsylvania to examine its stomach contents and establish why the dog outlived Barker. Investigators wanted to know if the dog was without food or water since Barker's disappearance. And as an animal lover, I don't I don't approve it like just because you want to know know if the dog had eaten anything since the disappearance of the girl you you cannot just kill him <laughs> euthanizing him means that you 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 kill the dog and he was healthy and like there was no need to euthanize him no don't don't do that i am also sad that mary jane Died and I want to know the answers, but I wouldn't kill an animal to understand what happened to her. Like, find another way. <sighs> I don't know. I'm actually sad about the dog. Like, I have dogs. I have dogs, okay? And I wouldn't just sacrifice, sacrifice them if someone around me died and my dog dogs were with them. Like, I, I wouldn't just sacrifice them. I would... I would I don't know. I love I love my dog so much. Like, duh, no. Camden County Coroner Robert J. Blake ruled her death an accident, a case of starvation with exposure, as a contributing factor. A spokesman for the coroner said Barker became trapped in the closet and died of fright and starvation. Due to a hole in the closet, she could not have suffocated. On March the 7th, Mayor Cornelius DeVanel ordered all closet doors to be equipped with special knobs that could be opened easily from both inside and outside. This order was made mandatory for all new home constructions or reconstructions. A ceremony in her memory was held at the St. Francis de Sales Church that same day. On March the 20th, radio station WPEN presented freaked out with a new puppy and English English setter. It, it won't be the same. It won't be the same, okay? Like just think of it, okay? Your your kid dies or like they kill your child to understand some kind of stuff, which is to know a whale and then they just let you adopt a new child and they're like, oh, you lost the one, you lost one, but here is another kid as a gift. No, 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 not dogs, not cats, like not pets, okay? No, it, it's wrong. I, I don't know, maybe you guys are like, oh, it's not wrong. Like animal lives are not as important as human lives and you're wrong okay you're wrong too every lives like everyone's lives matter okay we're all the same i don't know the press surrounding the barker case led to the first calls about the boy in the box Frank Gothram, who discovered the boy, had decided not to call the police until he listened to reports of the Barker case on his car radio. But we will talk about it on another video. Like I said before, I will cover his case too, and we will talk about all the details. It's all about this case, but I have some questions, and I think that you also have questions, and now we will 
talk about them i will give answers by myself and you will also be able to comment your answers and we will discuss the cases what led mary jane into the closet of an unfamiliar property two blocks from her home is the first question we're gonna answer and for me i feel like it is a strange situation for a four-year-old like I don't know about Mary Jane's family, but like normally family is born to your kids about those stuff. Like I don't know. It's it's just doesn't seem right to me. I don't know. What about the footprints of the man, the dog, and the child? Well, I mentioned about them about this information before and if you realize, we don't have any information about them. We just mentioned them, but we, we don't know anything about the footprints. Like, there was a man, right? And who was that man? Why his footprint was near the dogs and Mary Jane's? That, that's strange. Why wasn't Mary Jane found during the three previous searches? We can just say authority mistake for this one, right? Like, something is wrong with this. Something is wrong with this. Like, I know that authorities make mistakes all the time, but... I don't know. Either those who were searching for Mary Jane were all fools or Mary Jane was not there when they were searching so that was the reason they were not able to find her earlier right was it mere coincidence that the house belonged to relatives of the owner of the dog well I don't know but that's a little bit strange and suspicious if you ask me like coincidence I, I don't really believe in coincidences like yes yeah, sometimes there are some coincidences but in cases like true crime cases i don't really believe in coincidences was it coincidence that maria looked in the closet to discover her Missing friends. Answer me. Answer me. Was it a coincidence? Well, if you're asking me the question, then I would say that it is another suspicious situation. And I don't blame anyone, but <sighs> too much coincidence is in this case. Is it possible for a four-year-old child to starve and die of exposure while a puppy survives the same conditions? Well, I'm not a doctor or I don't know much biology. Like, I, I wasn't really good at biology, but if I am not mistaken, we can go without food for a long time like i don't know what like 20 or 30 days maybe or, or more i really oops sorry i really don't remember but yes mary jane was a little girl she was only four years old and maybe it was harder for her to stay alive but still i feel like something is also wrong with this because the puppy was alive and healthy and then the authorities killed that alive and healthy puppy was this a bungled investigation or a bizarre tragic accident i have suspicions but i cannot like answer this question with certainty because i don't have enough evidence to to prove things and yeah but i'd like to hear your theories and 
you can comment your theories or what you think yeah just just comment and some of you asked me to share more theories on the videos and for this one i was able to find a few good ones from reddit and it is open there and i'm gonna read it and then we will discuss it too reading from reddit right now it is strange that the other uh, blah, 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 blah. it is strange that the other little girl the owner of the puppy found them it makes me wonder if they had visited there together when mary jane got stuck that maria maria didn't tell anyone because she thought she would be in trouble the footprints could be explained by any number of activities if it was muddy, but it's also super weird that the house had been specifically searched and no one heard the dog or even checked the closet. Trapped puppies make a lot of noise. Was there actual evidence that the puppy was trapped with Mary, other than Maria's testimony? It could have simply been loose in or around the house and... For this theory i can only say that yes trap puppies like make a lot of noises a lot of noise so that's a good point like I, like i told you i am also a dog owner like i have dogs not only one dog and they are really really loud so yes it is weird like there, there has to, they had, there had to be some noise, right? I don't know. I have another theory. I'm sure I've read somewhere before that there is a theory both children could have been playing hide and seek, Mary then get stuck, or Maria locks her in as a joke. Maria leaves either scared she'll get in trouble or thinking Mary will be able to get out. Being six, she might not have even known Mary was missing when they went back to the house. She opens the closet and finds Mary dead, not realizing she would die if she was there that long. Maybe the closet was locked all the time, but Maria unlocked it. <sighs> That's also a good one, but, and I don't blame anyone, like, I cannot blame a six-year-old little girl, but you know what? We're just discussing, but Maria, Maria is, Maria is, you know, another theory. I wonder if she escaped from someone who abducted her and accidentally locked herself and a pup in the closet while, while trying to hide. Like she was fleeing out of fear and ran to a house that she knew or discovered was vacant and hid in a closet. I'm not sure why it's assumed she had been dead for two days when found because it is hard to believe the puppy wouldn't make enough noise to alert people of their presence in the closet had they been there when the house was searched. It makes more sense to believe that they weren't in the closet when the house was searched. I assume I missed something though. Yes, that would also explain the men's footprint, so it is possible. The last theory. This sounds like children were involved, like they might have been playing and they locked her in and she threatened them to tell, so they left her there. By the time the police got involved, the other kid or kids got scared, panicked. Or maybe one of them tells others she's not there anymore and maybe they've gone back and fed the dog once or twice, but not her. They brought her the chocolate milk to cheer her up after she gets upset from being locked in, but then they get too scared to keep going back and she died there. Mm. I, I just feel like something does not fit to this theory, but yes, that's also a possibility, but if you ask me, no. And now let's hear yours. Have a life, love stars. Till then.